Hello and welcome along to WD18, the Watford fan channel. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. Welcome to another video. Welcome to another podcast with myself, Jacob Coleshaw, Sam Yuko, Charlie Zazera. It's got a, bit, a little bit of everything on this podcast today. We're going to be touching on that last home game of the season, a win over Sunderland. We're going to be reacting to our predictions at the start of the season. So make sure you do watch the full video because, <laughs> because there's some interesting predictions, to say the least. Um, we're just going to have a little bit of a chat about Watford as we normally do on this podcast. My name is Jacob, obviously. Sam, how are you getting on, bud? It's it's great to see you. I probably should also just say, if you're thinking it's a different background, have I moved out and my parents kicked me out of uh, out of my house? No, I'm in a, a podcast studio at work. Hopefully the audio is a little bit crisper than usual. Um, unfortunately, you've got to listen to me even clearer than usual. <laughs> but Sam, how are you getting on, bud? Are you okay? I'm all, I'm all good, mate. All good. Um, enjoyed heading down to Watford uh, for one last time this season. Not just one last time this season, but the last time travelling down from Birmingham as well. And I must say, um, I'm quite happy with my record. So while I've been at uni, Watford have played 130 games and I've got to 111 of them. So I'll take that over the last three years. Way too much money spent following this club, considering the last three years have been terrible. But I should have won supporter of the season. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know the supporter of the season. I know Sarah and, and fair play to her. Just start for the shout out to her because this work that she's done with the Watford Museum, with the Trust, everything has been brilliant. So, yeah, congratulations to her. If she's 100% watching. a shout out. We also need to give a shout out to that Lampard transition, Sam. Um, it should have been given to me, but I mean, do we just talk about that? Let's just stop it right there. <laughs> Goodness me, oh, Sam. God. Frank Lampard in disguise. Uh, Charlie... You good? And also, we have to say, Charlie's preparation, once again, phenomenal for this. We've put a little compilation together of the predictions, so it should be back-to-back. -back. You won't have to be waiting around and us flicking through the video. Um, Charlie, you looking forward to this one today? Yeah, it's it good watching it back. Um, someone, com someone comes, does very well with the predictions out of the three of us. Um, and Who's some... your money on? Well, I know, so... I won't. <laughs> That'd be an easy bet. Yeah, so, some of the couple across very well, but there are some terrible, terrible shouts as well. So definitely worth sticking along. It's a, it should be a good watch. Just as a bit of a teaser before we touch on Sunderland, Charlie, which category would you say is the most uh, entertaining out of the lot? Probably the first one, you know, the top goal scorer. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness me. Okay. We're going to touch oh, on uh, Sunderland, final home game of the season. Uh, it finished at Watford. Uh, Watford won, Sunderland nil, Ryan Andrews with the goal. Uh, a lovely pass from Ishmael Kone and Ryan Andrews uh, getting his third goal in a Watford shirt on his 50th appearance uh, for his boyhood club as well. Uh, Sam, you were there at Vicarage Roads um, on Saturday. Look, at the end of the day, the result didn't really mean a lot in terms of the grand scheme of the season. Watford weren't going up or down. Sunderland weren't going up or down. It was mainly just to see a performance and and get finally that first home win under Tom Cleverley. You managed to do that. What did you take away from that Watford performance and result at the weekend? First, I, th I thought, first of all, it was two. I mean, two, I don't want to say poor teams, but two really, really poor performances. Um, I'd actually say that, I mean, we've debated on the channel before what... Watford's performance has been ranking them best to worst under Tom Cleverley. And I'd actually argue that that was the worst. Um, he probably, said the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Todd, Clev, Clev said, I think he said the words bang average performance or something like that. I thought that was a real lack of cohesion throughout the team. I just think, I think we've we've given credit to the Watford team previously for, for not being on the beach and for carrying on going this season. I think that was the definition of on the beach, playing against a really, really poor Sunderland side. So... Yeah, the first half was was a prime example of that. Watford started well in the first five minutes, and then the rest of the half was just absolutely terrible and nothing happened other than a really good save from Dan Backman. Second half was a bit more lively. We saw a bit of everything. We saw a bit of volleyball in the middle of the pitch as well, which was entertaining. My word, Luke O'Neill. What, do, oh what do you guys think about him and uh, Luke O'Neill? Because I was looking at him and the player he is, and I've watched him on a few games the last couple of years, and he's like an entertaining shithouse, isn't he? Like... I, I wouldn't mind that sort of character back, but I don't know if the Sunderland fans aren't a fan of him at the moment. No, I know he's been there quite a long time, hasn't he? He joined from Wickham. Um, I know he's featured a few times in the Sunderland Till I Die documentary, and it seemed like the love he was getting from Sunderland fans was pretty strong. I mean, just on the incident at, at the weekend, before we even get onto Watford's performance, as Sam said, I cannot believe he hasn't been sent off for that. I, I genuinely, I've watched that back a few times. It's the fact that, like, granted, there's no guarantees Mateus Martins would have gone on to score. I do have to caveat that. But it is denying a goal-scoring opportunity. And 
I think the, the issue I have with it as well, guys, is the fact that if you don't give that as a red card, it sets a really bad precedent, I think. I feel like it's, some would argue it's in between in a yellow and a red. It should be a blue card, for example, where you get Simbins. Maybe that's where some of the argument for a blue card would be to come in. But Sam, I couldn't believe that wasn't given as a red card. I think the Watford players' reaction told a lot as well. Because, but ex- exactly that. It's almost like if he'd clipped Martins when he was still on goal, he'd have got sent off. So what's the difference? I don't get it. It's, um, I, I mean, I, I didn't think it was as bad in the ground. And then watching it back, my word, absolutely ridiculous. I don't see how it was, wasn't a red card. But going back to it, I thought Watford did well to take get some sort of control into the game. Um, credit to, obviously, Jack Greaves for making his debut at the weekend. But I thought it was right that he came off and Ryan Andrews came on because we looked so much more dangerous on that right-hand side um, when Andrews came on a lot more direct. And it was a lovely finish. Um so, yeah, I, th- I think probably Watford just about deserved to win the game, albeit Sunderland did probably have the better chances overall. And, uh, yeah, good to get that first win at Vicarage Road under Clefs. Charlie, let's go through the Watford team that started at the weekend. Dan Backman in goal, a back three of Porteous, Hoot, Pollock, Jack Greaves making his full Watford home debut at right wing back. We know he's obviously a natural central midfielder. Ishmael Kone and Kiembe partnering in midfield with Semmer on the left, Spreer, Dennis and Bio making up the attacking trio. Um, who are your stand-up performers? Who didn't perform? Did you learn anything new about these players, Charlie? Stand-up performance. Um, Matty Pollock, maybe. Um, I thought he was really solid when he's come back in. Um, I don't know, Sam pulled a face if he disagreed, but I, I thought Pollock, Matty played well. Do you disagree? No, I, I don't disagree at all. I, I think with Matty, it was very much same old. Just a couple of times got caught out for pace a bit. Um, there was one particularly when when Batman made a good save in the second half, I think Matty had a header from a corner and then Sunderland broke and Matty just couldn't catch up with the play. And look, that, that's not his game, to be fair to him. I think for defending, I think he's brilliant. I'd actually argue he's one of our better defenders for that. Um, I think at times it's just same old frailties, really. But I think, as I've said before, I think the back five complements him really, really well. And we've seen the best of him since being in the back five. Yeah, I thought, I thought Wes who our player of the season, played well. What I love about Wes is... When, when there's a tackle to be made, he goes full, fully into it. And I think that gets the crowd up where he takes ball and man. Um, he did that on a couple of occasions. I think Dan Batman deserves uh, praise again. I thought he was pretty solid, kept it simple, made a couple of good saves. And apart from that, that's probably about it. Um, I think Ken Semmer did struggle a bit. I like that Trey Hume at right back. I thought dealt with Ken Semmer really, really well, considering Ken can be... Like a bulldozer at time, I think Trey Hume played really well, but yeah, I don't, I don't think there's too much to talk about this game. Yeah, really. there's no, we don't want to go too in depth on on this one because it is a game that is pretty irrelevant in terms of the grand scheme of things. Having said that, I actually thought Sunderland created some really good chances. Um, I think the one Jack Clark in the second half, I know there was a chance in the first half where we got away with it a little bit. Um, what changed from the first half to the second half, Sam? Uh, Tom Cleverley made a made a couple of changes. You said mentioned about Ryan Andrews coming on at wing back, obviously a natural wing back. I think actually when you think about Andrews, Sam, I think he's more of a wing back than he is a full back. I actually think he's in between a full back and a right mid or a right winger, if that makes sense, because he, he has a real desire to get forwards. He's got the pace and the burners to get beyond that last man. And that run, actually, but it was the weight of pass from Ishmael Kone, which I think has gone on the radar a little bit because he barely had to adjust his run, Ryan. Touch out of his feet, across the goalkeeper. He loves scoring a goal in front of the recruits he did against Birmingham. But what changed in that second half, Sam? Yeah, I must admit, I thought of you straight away when Ishmael Kone played that pass, thinking that's the sort of thing Jacob would love. I think you must have been, what, right in line with it as well, wouldn't you? Yeah, I was yeah. right in line. Just in the upper Graham Taylor. I saw Kone get a little bit of space in the middle. But I think Kone struggled a little bit in the first half, I thought. I yeah. thought he grew into the game in the second. But the weight of pass, I love it. To, to me, that's just intelligent play because he doesn't have to break his stride he can run onto it it's someone to appreciate though because the amount of times you see passes go into players they're not thinking about how the other person's going to receive it I just thought it was clever play from Kone and showed his quality and then Andrews did the rest Sam. yeah definitely um I think what it's represented is uh with Ryan Andrews what a fantastic season I think it's even towards the end of the season because it hasn't been as good in the first half as it was in the first half for him but for a first full season in men's football, it's been absolutely brilliant. Three goals, continuing to perform for, for the England development team, albeit he was injured last time out and playing consistently in the first team. I think it's an excellent season for Ryan Andrews um, and I think he'll only get better. What I was really impressed about with the finish was um, I think it shows a real maturity in his game because 
what I my sort of problem in the first half of the season, not with him necessarily because he's a young player, but I think his final ball sometimes really, really lacked. And I think it's it come on massively um and throughout the season. And I think it, that 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 finish really, really showed that and, and really underlined what's been a fantastic season for him. That nothing against Jack Reeves. I thought fair play to him uh, coming in there, making his debut. So, so happy for him. Proper Watford through and through. And let's hope that there's plenty more performances to come from him. But I just think Ryan Andrews coming in uh, for him in the second half, I think, made a real change for us. That was that was the story of the match, really. But post-match, Charlie, we, we touched on some of the people who won awards. Uh, Wesley Hoot, first off, picking up the, the player of the season. Uh, to be honest, the, the main thing about Wes, he winning the player of the season, Yasser Espirito winning the young player of the season. But if you caught it at Vicarage Roads, they asked Espirito to say a few words and he, he doesn't speak a lot of English. And Wesley Hoot jumped in as a Spanish translator. And I put a tweet out post-match by basically saying, not only is he player of the season, not only is he club captain, not only is he Spanish translator and potentially could be a Calvin Klein model, I think Wesley Hoot has it all. But deservedly so, Charlie, Wesley Hoot winning the, the, the player of the season. Did you vote for anyone else? Yeah, just before that, yeah, congratulations to Jack Greaves making his full debut. Um, I thought I'd, everyone's kind of said sometimes he was getting ignored out on the out on the wide there when he was asking for it and stuff. I don't know if you guys saw more of it, but I, I thought he looked right. He popped over defender head at the defender's head at some point, and yeah, for him to get that start, hopefully he can stay around the first team and contribute more next season. But big fan of Jack, so buzzing for him. And on yeah, on Wesley Hoop, I did vote for him and Yasa, um, young player of the season. I just think Hoop's been the most consistent. Um, I caught the Watford Buzz podcast this morning and they said about the season's been in three like, uh, thirds um, where kind of Jake Livermore would have won it if it was the middle third, maybe someone like Matthias Martin, the first third, but Wesley Hoot's been consistent throughout um, and I think he's turned himself and made himself into new Watford captain if everything stays the same and I don't know about his contract situation, but I think he's going to be staying around, but yeah, I think he's been consistent. He's made some mistakes, but I think he's shown leadership. Um, and yeah, happy that he's happy that he's won it. Well deserved in my eyes. Yeah, player of the season. His contract runs out of Watford in June 2025. So it would be we would be going into the last year of his last season of his contract. Uh, Sam, he's 30 years of age. Wesley Hoot. Uh, he's clearly got a, quite a bit of affection for this football club um he's in sort of that period of his career when he's probably just trying to stick at one place and, and have a few years uh, at the football club he joined in January 2023 so he's been here a season and a half year and a half uh Sam would you look to extend that deal with a year left in his contract at it's first diff- yeah it's, it's a difficult question I think it's one of those maybe you assess it in January and, and potentially risk losing him on a, on a free in the summer um, great to see him down the bunker at the end uh, of the game as well. Uh, fair play to him for that. I just think it, it's interesting because when, I, obviously, I don't know how Wes feels. And, and I mean, he seems to be playing really, really well. Doesn't seem to be struggling for fitness at all. He played most minutes this season uh, other than when he was suspended, if not all minutes, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um, I just think potentially when you get to age 30, another full season of championship football, potentially you could get you could see him start to slow down so it's one that I'd potentially hold off on uh until the first few months of the season maybe yeah it's the amount of football he's played at Watford I think it's probably up there for some of the most he's played throughout his career um okay yeah. I've got the got the stats up here so he's played 62 games for Watford he played 73 for Anderlecht and 87 for Lazio so he's played more games for Watford than he did for Southampton by 15 16 games so it'll be interesting to see whether they look at that that option and whether they extend his contract. So would, he would you play... extend it? Would you both extend it? I'd be tempted to give another year. Yeah, I'm not sure. It depends. It depends what he's on. Um, I, mean, I imagine he'd be on quite high wages. Um, but if he's your cap, if you, if he's your captain, really, you want to be. Do you know what I mean? Tying him down because you want to show that longevity and you don't want to make him club captain and then a month's time having to find another one. So probably a decision that I wasn't really thinking about that the club needs to kind of sort out pretty early. Yeah, put it this way. I think he's one of the guaranteed starters for next season. I think when you think of the sort of Tom Cleverley team going into 24-25. So he won player of the season of Wesley Hoot. 
Uh, as I mentioned, he did the bit of Spanish translation for Yasser Esprit, Charlie, who won the young player of the season. It felt like when he came off, Sam, I don't know if it was the same view in the ground, that he was waving goodbye. He did really uh, take it all in. Milk it, some would say, uh, giving it the waves to the Elton John, the Rooker, etc. <laughs> Even at full time, he went over to his family um, in, in the corner just by the 1881 and was waving to the Watford fans. Is that the last time we'll see Yasser at the Vic, Charlie, do you think? I think so. I think we've said it for a while, uh, just in our current situation, knowing that he's going to be the asset who's going to get us the most money that we need now without parachute payments. It's a real shame, really, because I think if we had him for another year, we could have potentially got 10 million more than we, we will get for him. But if you look around the squad and our other options about how we're going to raise money this summer, um, I, I can't really see that many alternatives. So a real shame. The fact that he was waving kind of indicates that we saw it with Jao Pedro that Brighton deal I think was done before the end of the season if I'm, if I'm not right I think he went down to Brighton not before after our um, final home game didn't he so yeah real shame um, really really good player um, I think he's had a good season deserved to win young player uh, hopefully he can go on kick on and become a world beater because there's some serious talent there there is some serious talent. I know Sam's had a few reservations about some of his performances uh, over the last couple it's of like, seasons. It, it's not reservate. I mean, reservations, yes. I, I'm never doubting the talent. I think he could go on to be an absolutely exceptional player. And I think, if anything, the place from that will be away from Watford, perhaps a bit more of a stable environment because what well, he came in under Rob Edwards, so he this top cleverly would be the fifth manager he's worked under in two years in a new country. So... I, th I think it's probably best for him to move on. I just feel like at times I wanted him to sort of take the game by the scruff of the neck a bit more. And I don't want to say hides, but I just feel like sometimes he could get a bit more involved in games. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that sort of um, criticism is probably a bit harsh, but you know what I mean? That sort of reservations with him because I felt even in the Sunderland game, he just holds on to it a little bit too long sometimes to Spurrier. Yeah, maybe I, that's I, because he doesn't want to give it and maybe he doesn't think he's going to get it back the way he wants to. But I just feel sometimes he could release the ball a bit earlier. Yeah, I actually thought Sunderland, I thought it was one of his better games, particularly in the second half. I thought that's what I wanted from him in terms of taking the game by the scruff of the neck and really getting more involved in the game. I think, in a way, and I know you're a huge fan of him, Jacob, so I'd be keen on your thoughts. I, I'm looking at the same thing with Ishmael Kone here. I sort of just feel like sometimes he could, you know, when Watford is struggling to get control in the middle of the park, like in the first half of that Sunderland game, I sometimes just want to see a little bit more from him because he's so talented and could be huge for us. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I don't disagree with you on that, Sam. I think where I sort of maybe just give them a little, a little bit more of a free pass is probably just their age as well in terms of the amount of football they've played and also their, their, that period of their career. And I think with Kone and Esprit, they're both at the early stage. I mean, with Esprit, he's 20. Kone's 21, if I'm not mistaken. And they're going to have ups and downs in terms of their performances. So I think you almost just have to accept that at that point in their career. I mean, just on back onto Esprit, Charlie... Just looking at his stats here, uh, he's played 85 games for Watford, potentially could play against Middlesbrough, whether they'll risk him for that because it's, you know, as as you said, Charlie, it's a guaranteed transfer fee that goes goes to Gino. 85 games, seven goals, nine assists. On transfer mark, they value him at 8 million euros. What fee should Watford be asking for from a potential club? I think we could, I think we can get maybe 10 up front and five in add-ons, something like that. Um Again, like I said, if we had another season where he really kicked on, which you'd imagine he would do, we could be looking at 20. Um, but then again, you look at Jao Pedro and he went for, what, what, 30? So it's one of those, I just think it is what it is. And when we talk about that with Espria, I think the important thing I, I'm taking is like, can you imagine if, I don't know, a young player at Watford, maybe a Ryan Andrews, if you took him to Colombia and dropped him in a bang average <laughs> Colombian second division team and say go and perform so I just think a bit of context is key but I think he's going to have a, a really really good career yeah I'll take 10 million up front five and add-ons and hopefully that helps us for the summer and maybe gives us I don't know five million or so for the January transfer window which Clev's kind of um kind of mentioned they're going to have to be creative in the, in the window so I'm sure we'll do some videos over the summer about potential targets etc uh, we'll just have a bit more of a smaller budget I imagine yeah absolutely absolutely uh, it's, Wesley, it's, interesting. Oh, sorry, sorry, go on, it's, it's interesting looking at sort of the sources of money for the summer um, because we're obviously relying on a spree doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting for that um, potential sell-on fee if Joao Pedro moves on from Brighton as well 
I've still got my predicted uh, transfer dominoes that I, I spoke about a few weeks ago. Um, Go on, then, Sam, remind us for people who don't know. I think I've said this, and this might sound this might sound big, a big call, but I could just see it. Kylian Mbappe is going to Real Madrid. I think João Pedro might go to PSG because I think they said that they don't want to spend all the money on one big player. They want to spend it throughout the team. So I reckon I can see Pedro going to PSG. And I can see Astros Brea going to Brighton. That's the domino effect. That's my domino effect. So are we going. saying we're putting Mbappe, Pedro and Espria in the same conversation? <laughs> That's what we're going for. I mean, who would have thought <laughs> Kylian Mbappe leaving PSG to go to Real Madrid would impact Watford so heavily? Goodness me, we are absolutely massive. I just wanted to ask you about, uh, Charlie, what you made of... And we will, as, as Charlie mentioned, we will do videos over the summer about uh, this Watford team under Tom Cleverley, 24-25. Cleverly seem really excited by the proposition of building a team to the way he wants to build it and bringing an identity to a team that he feels like he started to bring in the early stages of his caretaker role and now obviously on to the permanent role as well. Uh, did you catch that interview with Jeff Doyle on BBC Three County? Oh, yeah, yeah. Talk about the recruitment. What did you make of his comments there? Because I actually came away from that going, just don't let him down, Gino, please. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Tom, what a man. I actually uh, dropped him a message late last week after we got confirmed just said congrats and we're all behind you and all that jazz go he, on son he, he got back to me and he was kind of like i oh, really appreciate the support um big one on saturday can't wait and stuff like that so he's just he's a he's a hero so I, i'm buzzing with clevs like that have you got a man of... crush charlie huh have you got a man crush on clevs i oh, know it's just it, it, it's just the a hero isn't it? out next season of tom family behind charlie <laughs> <laughs> it's just um yeah like i just think i've just been so impressed since he's come in and yeah that interview was quite telling he was talking about the loans we're gonna need to dip back into loans funny that he, he originally was alone wasn't he when he came in at watford so yeah I'm, I'm i'm excited i'm optimistic um heading into but yeah jacob we'll have to put the caveat of gino just give him just give him a decent ish squad to work with and just give him some time um because if he can replicate some of the performances he's produced, I think would be in a really good position. I've been really impressed with him. Apparently, the interview he did after the awards was was good. Again, what do you know exactly what he said there? Yeah, he, he basically just obviously, firstly, he said very similar to your text message, Charlie. Just thanks to the fans for the for the support, etc. Um, he he really felt the love of the Watford fans since he's come in. Um, he's really excited by the proposition of for example Andrew's coming through Greaves coming through Jimmy Gilligan he did announce is going to be going back to the academy that was always the plan although he helped him in the early stage of his interim role Jimmy Gilligan's going to help the pathway of young players from the Watford Academy into the first team and I think that's a really exciting thing to be a Watford fan at this moment in time because this is what the club was built on and if we can get more academy players into the first team and in and around the first team like Greaves like Andrews, etc. That's only a good thing, I think, for what for going forward. So, basically, said that and sort of mentioned the the sort of values that Graham Taylor's instilled into this football club and what he's trying to do for next season. And uh, he's really looking forward to the for next campaign. And I think it was a nice touch at the end of the at the end of the lap of appreciation. One thing I did want to mention actually about the lap of appreciation, just to wrap up, because as football fans, we all do it when we see the the, the players going around clapping. We analyse it. What's the technique? Are they looking at certain fans more than others? How long have they been on the pitch? Have they gone on their own? Did find it interesting though, Sam. I'm going to be one of those fans. Ishmael Kone going on a lap of appreciation before everyone else. Did you read anything into that? Giving it what giving it for people who aren't, aren't watching, giving it the heart symbol to every Watford stand you talk in the Anne Swanson family stand, the Graham Taylor stand, the Rookery, the Elton John stand. I wouldn't read too much into it, no. Um, <laughs> I think, um, I mean, I previously, <laughs> I previously picked up previously in the season that he does like to go around um, by himself when, when clapping at Vicarage Rose rather than with the rest of the team. So potentially it is something like that. And he is someone who likes to give back to the fans quite a bit Ishmael Kone and and enjoy the support so I think at the moment it's just that just hoping he doesn't leave I mean it wouldn't surprise me if, if a good offer came in but yeah hoping he doesn't keep sell or loan watch this space also another player that we mentioned we mentioned Andrew Greaves Shaq Ford who's been out on loan at Leighton Orient one uh, Leighton Orient's young player of the season so he's definitely one to keep an eye on come next season is there anything else we want to mention lads before we move on to the predictions Charlie Sam anything I've missed I think we're all good. I think we're all good. Is, are you ready? 
<laughs> some of these predictions. Uh, this has taken taken a little bit of planning. Uh, Sean Charlie said he rewatched the whole video. Um, sort of, we've got we've got the categories. If you remember, if you watched the video when we first did it, we had sort of top goal scorer, etc. And that's the first one. So we'll kick it off with that. These were our top score predictions for the 23-24 season. Here we go. The Crow, Vakin Bayer. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Just looking at the squad we've got going on, looking at the game's pre-season, um, and he, although he missed a sitter against Palace, he scored two against Peterborough. Um, we have to remember with, with Valerian Ishmael, he's going to be like his 60 minutes, so I think Bayer is going to get... Lots of game time, but I think Bio could get maybe 10 plus goals this season. Sam, hit me. Mr. Thomas Ince. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I know he's injured at the moment, but like I, I like Bayo and I wouldn't mind him as a backup striker, but there aren't too many goals it looks like in the team at the moment. And when he's fit, I know he's I know he's he's injured at the moment, it seems, but I'm going to go with Ince as our as our top scorer. I think when he's playing, he took penalties and set pieces uh, at Reading. Um, so I'm, I'm chucking the Imran loser argument uh, here at here at Tom Ince as well, and I think he'll uh, I, I think he'll score a few goals for us. Wow! I can't wait to watch this back at the end of the season when Ince plays about two games. <laughs> he's going to age phenomenally, Sam. Jacob. <laughs> so I actually I buy a bio written down a bear written down. But just I, what I will say is if we bring in another striker, I think that striker will be our top goal scorer, is what I would say. So at the minute, out of the current players, I think Bayo's got the highest chance of, as you say, Charlie, is all the list is Charlie, so I'm not going to repeat them, of being the top goal scorer. But what I would say is if we bring in someone else, I think they'll become the top goal scorer. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Samuel Yuko, I'm lost for words. Just to get some of the stats up here. Uh, two goals for Thomas since this season. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, to be fair, I did say can't wait to watch this back when he plays about two games at, by the end of the season. So, <laughs> that was your well, best shout in the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> Not my finest. Look, I think <laughs> I was relatively excited when he came in because a lot of my Reading fans, was, uh, fr- Reading friend, friends who are Reading fans were saying um, how, how good he was for them and how he, he was a good signing for us. So, uh, yeah, I hold my hands up to that. That was a horrific shout. Jacob, you t- Jacob have you taken the, the Rayovich dub? Oh, I'm taking that dub every day of the week. Oh, I'm going to milk that. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I have to say, like, out of the options, when we were doing that video, I kind of thought, who could get us 10-plus goals? Now, if you look at the list at this moment in time, Vacuum Bayo's on seven goals, Esprit's on six, Martins is on six. That's our top three. But Milita Rayovich is on 11 goals this season. I'm going to take that dub. Obviously, Rivich hadn't signed at the time, right, Charlie? No. So it was it was very much sort of. I'm just, I was predicting the next striker to come in. It's a weird one though, isn't it, with Rivich? Well, despite him getting 11 goals, this, the jury's still out on him. But Bio, to be fair, Bio was a, was a solid prediction. Seven goals this season. Take it. Thanks for taking the two Okay, next up is our head coach prediction. Take it away, Charlie. I'm going to be optimistic and uh, say it in my chest, but I think Big Val is going to last one full season. Um, at least at Watford. Um, I think the club, Manga, everyone recognises how burnt we got with Rob Edwards last season. Don't want to talk too much about it. We've invested, we, we went for Val early. It looks like we're recruiting for him. He's Manga's man. Um, look, it is. if you look at all the evidence, it, just, it does suggest that if, we, if we're 20th or whatever in November, October, that Gino will pull the trigger. But... I'm just praying. Stick with him. Uh, yeah, I'll go with three managers uh, again, <laughs> to be honest with you. I think that's been the trend over the last few years. I've, I've thought about it. Okay, so we've got someone who is quite, he's known in the championship, but he's quite, it's almost a modern playing style. So he'll mm. come in, start off with that. Then we'll go for someone sort of in the Ranieri, Slavin Bilic mould, who's sort of been proven-ish, but but has something a bit to prove at this level as well. Um I haven't really put my put my finger on who it could be. Maybe someone I've always said Club Puel. I could just see it at Watford. So Club Puel will be my second shout. And then for third I'm gonna go either Steve Bruce, I think they'll give it to, or Big Sam. Um something like that. Uh or if not Come on Sam, you're better than this. They'll give it Charlie Daniels for five five games. Charlie, yeah. <laughs> All cleverly. Or cleverly, yeah. I actually had written down that he is going to last the season. Um, 
which I, I've, I've kind of got with the Charlie made mindset of kind of I'm blocking out the noise and I'm just like, please, Val, just stay the whole season. But what I would say is if he does go, I actually think he's one of the better managers to leave behind a squad. Because one thing I've been reading about this preseason, it's been really, really intense. And there's one thing for certain, the fitness is going to be high, just in terms of the way we want to play. I think you've got it spot on about Val leaving us in a half-decent position if he leaves and the fitness levels. I think compared to last season, the squad have been massively a lot more fit. So uh, you've got the lottery numbers, Jacob. Do you know what, mate? I Honestly... <laughs> I don't, to be honest, I, I meant it more in like a fitness way. I think, to be fair, that what Val's left us in terms of discipline in the change room and the, the culture in the change room, I think is pretty good. Uh, Sam, don't want to deflect away from some of your, your takes there, though, mate. I mean, we've had Claude Puel potentially to come in. Steve Bruce, I mean, just talk to the people. I know a lot of people are listening to this going, Steve Bruce. I know. I was just going through sort of the motions of what we've seen over the last few years. I was more thinking that... You know, I, I was thinking because we tried Billich last season and Chris Wilder, I thought I think that I thought they were gonna revert back to the Ranieri and Hodgson sort of thing and try that again. So I went Steve Bruce or Claude Powell and then I did think Charlie Daniels, um, or as Jacob said, Tom Cleverly could come in. So that one didn't surprise me to be fair. Um, yeah, I, I think definitely as well, Jacob, your shout about um fitness levels improving well, it was definitely a good one because other than Jeremy and Gakia and a cup and Ken Samara. I can't really think of many other players who have had sort of persistent injuries this season. I just wanted to shout out Jack Turner on Twitter as well because he actually clipped uh, this video up before we did this one and mentioned the the, the Charlie Daniels cleverly shout. Um, okay, we move on to the next category, which is our biggest surprise that we think is going to happen this season. Tough this. Maybe maybe Bio top, top scorer could have ended this, but I think I'm going for biggest surprise is um, Ishmael Kone. Uh, will be one of our best players this season. Um, he obviously came in uh, midway through last season. I think he showed really, really encouraging spells. Um, he's been playing good for Canada when he's, whenever he's played. I think he's quite a, a suited player to what Ishmael want. High energy, he's pressing will be high quality. Sam? In a similar vein, I'm going with Matty Pollock to have a breakthrough season this year. Um, I think he really showed at Aberdeen that he's a really capable player. He showed in the lower leagues that he had a really capable player. And I think as too many Watford fans, and uh, I mean, you could argue that it's fair uh, judging him off that half an hour nightmare spell away at Mill last season where Tom Bradshaw absolutely rinsed him. But I think if we get, if he's able to get a run of games and no doubt he will when Watford players start getting injured or, or need to be rotated for fitness uh, reasons. I, I could see him cementing a starting place this season and, and really impressing and surprising a few people as well. I've also gone with the breakout theme uh, and I've gone with Matthias Martins because he showed flurries last season and I think if he gets a regular run in the side and the way uh, Val wants to play, I think that could be a, a good season. I think he showed bright sparks last season when he played um, I just think he needs a regular run in the team and he will get that, I think. So I'm going to go with Mateus Martins to have a breakout season. I think probably the best shout is Kona, actually, uh, Charlie, out of the three. I think Pollock breakthrough season probably hasn't played enough to be a breakthrough season, but it's broken through. But Kone was the one who's played 41 games this season and he has been one of Watford's better players, for sure. Yeah, he's got some great goals, hasn't he? So again, like hopefully that lap of honour is just him being a... A lovely guy, but yeah, I'm I'm hoping he kicks on next season because we're going to need some star quality. So, um, I love I love Conan Ishmael Kone. Ole, ole. <laughs> Sweet, we move on. Okay, the next category is our hot take <laughs> for this season. This should be interesting. I feel like this category is very similar to the biggest surprise, really, um, yes. because. My hot take was going to be what Sam just said. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say that I think Matty Pollock might um, might become a regular starter for us. Um, and I'll, I'll just pivot from that because um, I don't want to be too boring. And someone in the comments has said it, um, but I'll just say it for a laugh anyway. Um, I think Francesco Sierra could become the second coming of Pirlo and be the DM <laughs> that, that Val wants. Sam. A bit of a different theme to what we've, we've discussed already, but my hot take is we will go on a cup run this season <laughs> in one of the uh, in one of the Carabao Cup or the FA Cup. I'm not too sure which. And obviously a lot of things need to fall into place for, for that to happen in terms of getting favourable draws. But 
Steven mm. Edgeway, it's a nice start. If we can get through that this time, <laughs> got, I mean, we always struggle in the Carabao Cup in those first two rounds, but something just tells me the season there'll be a little cup oh, run and maybe oh. even a cup upset along the way, too. Uh, how deep are we going? I'm um, going to go quarter final with the FA Cup. Oh, my. <laughs> so, the one I wrote down as soon as I saw it was a spree will be Championship Young Player of the Year. Nice. Uh, that was my because I was just thinking with uh, what's the Bristol City player's name? I've just completely gone blank. Alex Scott. Alex Scott. I mean, Bristol City were kind of floating around mid table, dropped off a little bit, and I think it gives an opportunity for one of those players to like really just take off. And I think I don't know what it is about a spree, but I think this season is going to be a season. So. That's my hot take that he'll win Young Championship Player this season. Quarter final, Sam. <laughs> well, I must say, I must caveat with the fact that we never normally get out the third run, third round of the FA Cup in the last few years. So uh, I'll take that. We played three FA Cup games this year. For me, that, that's a cup run in my <laughs> I mean, my, my, my last shout was, was saying we get we have to get past Stevenage. We lost on penalties. So, my God. Goodness, what do you know what it is for me? It's the confidence we're all saying it with that we actually think it's going to happen. Uh, Charlie, remind me what was yours again? Um, for Sierra Alta being the Chilean yeah, Pirlo. I feel like you, you tried to speak that into existence. Pirlo. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, at the start of the season, he was he was that number six. I reckon he played six or seven games there and didn't disgrace himself. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see where he goes in the keep loan or sell video, but he, he holds a special place in my heart, does Franny. And I probably went a bit overboard about Asprey being the young player of the season. I know he won young player of the season for us, but championship young player of the season, I don't think he's going to take that uh, for now. So we we move on to the next category. Will Watford have a cup run next season? That will be the title of this video. Uh, best signing. I'm going to go. I'm going to go for Jamal Lewis. Um, I think he's a really really smart bit of business. We've done a good video um, with Chris from Talk Norwich City. So make sure you check that out if you haven't already. Um, he was really good for Norwich in their promotion season. Liverpool wanted him. Newcastle ended up paying around 15 million for him. Um, he's got good energy. I think he's going to make that left back role his own and be be really good for us. Good at delivering balls, which is serious to what Val wants. Hopefully, the crow can be on the end of its head a few in. I'm going to go with Tom Ince as signing of the season. Um, <laughs> it's probably a bit of a risk putting everything in one basket, but I think he's someone with championship experience. Yes, he got relegated last year, but. He had some of the best stats in the league in terms of pressing and, and winning the ball back as well, I think. Um, he's perfect for Valerian and Ismail's system. And if we can get him fully fit, which, as mentioned earlier, he, he doesn't seem to be at the moment, I think we've got a fantastic bit of business there for 50 grand or whatever it was. The player I've actually gone for is... Um, so it was actually a toss-up between, for me, Lewis and Livermore. And the reason I've gone with Livermore is because I think... We've got this knack of signing a player on a free, like a Carlos Sanchez, like a Ben Watson. I know they're in the middle of the season, but it just seemed to prove a few people wrong. And I think with Jake Livermore, he'll play a bit more than I think some people would probably like. But I actually think he'll do a job for us. And that is that might be my hot take slash <laughs> signing of the season. But I actually think he'll go on to be a decent signing for us. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Livermore was my shout. I, I don't want to say I won that round, lads, but just the two other shouts were Jamal Lewis and Tom Ince. Uh, I went with Jake Livermore. Funnily enough, though, Charlie actually saved me, and I, I'm not going to make up like I know football. Uh, I was going to say it was Jamal Lewis or, or Jake Livermore, and I didn't want to go with the same answer as Charlie, so I changed it to Livermore. But to be fair, it has worked out pretty well. And, to, and some of the players actually said that they were his player of the season because of some of the performances, and we'll never forget QPR away. But I wanted to pull up the two lads and some of their shouts. So we've had Jamal Lewis, which... I'm going to defend you, Charlie. I think a lot of people looked at him when he came in and thought he would go on to be better than he actually has been. Sam Tomins, talk about this love affair because there seems to be a real, <laughs> <laughs> there seems to be a real affection to Tomins, and I think your Reading mates have absolutely had you on it. Uh, welcome to a new series on WD18 called Sam Stinkers, uh, <laughs> reacting to reacting to my predictions from last season. Um, yeah, look, I was, I think in the summer, we were clutch, I, I was clutching at the straws a bit. Um, I wasn't the most optimistic going into the new season. So, uh, yeah, fair play to Jacob because 
I mean, we've spoken about this on a video before, at least after QPR as well, because I think Jake Livermore did really, really well to prove so many Watford fans wrong. Um, his legs have gone, he's decrepit, um, etc. Um, but I think he he did well, I didn't play so much under Tom Cleverley. I think he came in and did a really good job. And uh and Charlie, just a word on Lewis. Yeah, I liked um I can't wait to see how many crosses he puts onto bio. Did did that happen once? I don't <laughs> But um, yeah, Chris Free, that's for you. You've, you've sold me short with that one. But yeah, well done, Jacob. I think that's pretty spot on. I think Ooh. if you kind of said word for word what you're saying about he'll play more games than people want and uh, it'll surprise a few people. So well done, mate. Thank, thank quick, you, mate. I appreciate that. Quick interlude before we go on to the next one. Um, Chris Reeve did a fantastic video over the weekend where he took Norwich player Ona Hernandez into the singing section at Norwich with him while Hernandez has been injured. Question for both of you. If you could take one Wofford player into the 1881 with you, current squad members, who would it be? Ishmael Kone, ole, ole. Ishmael Kone, ole, ole. I think Kone is my one as well. He just seems to absolutely love it. I think, it, it, or maybe even a bit greasy. I reckon chuck some Stone Island on him and he'd absolutely love the 1881. <laughs> just picture this. Imagine pre match pints with Ryan Porteous. Imagine how many beers. I reckon he's. I reckon he's heavy when he drinks Porteous. So. Do you reckon? I'd actually go Porto. I reckon you I could see Porto. him. I could see him giving it large to the to the away end as well, wearing Harry Welch flat cap, giving it large. I go yeah, Porto. I, I reckon he'd be all over that in the family stand. Um, yeah. I was, <laughs> was going to say with uh, with Porto as well. He's got one of the best better chance as well, and I think him seeing his own chance would be top draw. We move on uh, from signing of the season to. Player of the season. I'm going. I'm going for Imran Loser. I think people are sleeping on Loser a bit. Um, well, I can see Sam getting ruffled already. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, yeah. Even last season, I looked at his numbers before. He got five goals and four assists. Um, I think that's a goal contribution. 159 minutes. Um, he barely started, but he still makes an impact. We signed him for 10 million pounds. Um, he's a Moroccan international. I think he shows glimpses of high quality. Um, we saw Blackpool away, that free kick. Um, the Norwich game at home last season scored two nice goals. I think he could be on penalties and um, free kicks this season. Um, look at Valerian Ishmael in recent years. Alex Moa has been a key player. I think that's who he's... I think that's Luz is going to play that role. So I think he's going to be having plenty of shots from outside the area. Um, I think he's a really quality player. He's been given that membership for the leadership group, so hopefully he can thrive on that. But my player of the season, uh, I'm going to go with Ryan Andrews. Uh, because, Ooh. Well, assuming the fact that it's going to be voted for by the fans again, fans already will have a soft spot for Ryan Andrews because he's one of our own, ultimately. And as I've always said, the back end of last season, I was so impressed by what he by what I saw from him. I think someone who's good on the ball, he's confident off the ball as well and, and can do a job in 1v1 situations. So I really like the look of him. Hopefully it is just to nurture him. The big question, obviously, is can he do it through a whole season rather than just the back end last eight to ten games or whatever it was? Um, but yeah, I've got high hopes for Andrews and he's my player of the season shout. I've gone with I've gone with my boy. Espria! Da, 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 da. No, I, I, I honestly think Espria with that extra bit of responsibility, he's going to be playing a lot. Might take out of him. I think we might be a little bit inconsistent, but I think on his day, he's our best player in terms of the passing ability, his touch, his awareness. And what I will say is there's a reason why Brighton have shown a bit of interest in him because he is a proper player. Let's address you, Mr. Zazera, because <laughs> as you, as Jacob picked up on in the video, as soon as you said Imran Loser, I knew you were wrong back in August. <laughs> I knew you were wrong. I'll tell you one wrong. thing that I did get right, though. Go on. He still rattled you and he's still living in your head <laughs> rent-free. <laughs> How many months does that go, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Nearly a year ago. I mean, yeah, he did a fantastic job in the leadership group as well, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Captain, leader, legend, loser. <laughs> to be fair, do you know what's that? Ryan Andrews wasn't a bad shout. I actually, yeah. I, I thought the logic behind that made a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he was necessarily near player of the season, but I think he's had been one of our better players, and I think he's, he's been brilliant for, for what for his age and and like we said at the start of the video when talking about his goal against Sunderland. I mean, uh, yeah, I think I think he's improved dramatically. I think physically he's got better as well. If you look at a picture from when he made his debut against Reading in the FA Cup last year to now, he's he's got bigger as well. So, yeah, even I might. Do you know what? 
putting it out there now. That's too early. I was going to say I might, I, might, I might have a similar shout for next season if he stays around. You reckon? We will do another one for these for next year, and maybe in a year's time we'll look back on <laughs> we'll look back on these ones as well. Okay, we move on. We've done the player of the season. We move on to our young player of the season. Well, I've gone Ryan Andrews, and I, like, I really like Sam Shout. And again, this this could come back to bite me. This kind of vibe, but I'm really hoping we're seeing kind of our version of Trent Alexander Arnold. A young player of the season, I've gone with Andrews as well, which is a bit boring. Having said that, I think what Charlie mentioned about Trent, I actually think his nearest comparison from what I've seen so far is someone like Max Ahrens. I'll go with the Spurrier for my young player of the season. As you said, Jacob, I hope he's bulked up over the summer because there's a real <laughs> special player there, particularly his eye for a pass. Uh, it is really, really good, really impressive. And if he can get a consistent run of games together, I think it'll be a big season for him. And then the question after that, if he does have a good season, is can we keep him for another year after that or will we cash in? Sam, you go take a bow, son. <laughs> the people who aren't watching, by the way, Sam was <laughs> celebrating off camera when the predictions <laughs> are rolling through. But is that is that the first nailed on shout, I think? That's probably like actually to get the war, get the right award, the right player. Sam, that's, that's so. So you all laughed at me throughout my predictions for Tom Ince, but I'm the only, I'm, I'm still doing better than both of you. So, <laughs> um, Charlie, your shout was Andrews. I went Andrews as well. I think to be fair, Andrews was probably second place behind the Spurrier. I think that was a very solid round for WD18. We move on to the last round though, which is where will Watford finish this season? The quality of the league this season with Plymouth and Ipswich going up is not doing us any favours. Um, and then you look at the likes of Coventry, decided to spend another £7 million on a striker today on top of Ellis Sims and buying a Dutch left-back. So they're going to be really strong. Um, Leicester, Southampton, Leeds are going to be unreal. Um, I'm going to go that we're going to finish an optimistic 10th. Sam? Uh, I'll go 15th. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 sorry, it's the way you dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel so, quite bad going after Charlie. I think, to be honest with you, it's not too dissimilar from, from what Charlie said, because in the Championship, that gap between 10th and 15th can often be quite tight, only a few points, maybe three to six points. So I think in that mid-table sort of area, where it would be just above the relegation scrap, but we won't be near the playoff, uh, the playoff race. So... I've gone with 14th, and I think we'll finish on 60 points. Is my uh, is my prediction? Um, oh yeah. Uh, the only the only the reason I've gone 14th is I just think squad depth might be a little bit of a hindrance for us, unless and we are bearing in mind there is still a bit of the transfer window to go. But even so, it would have to be a pretty special end of the window to give us the real squad depth. I think if we wanted to be pushing for the playoffs, I'll tell you what. Not bad, not bad predictions at all there. Charlie, you went the highest with, with 10th, was it? Yeah, very optimistic. Um but this is why this is why we love you though, mate. I mean, you were you I love the optimism at the start of the season. I think we were all brought in by what Val was trying to do, Val ball wise, but tenth I do you know what it was? It goes back to the reasoning I said at the on the predictions a year ago. I just felt we didn't have the squad depth, maybe. I mean, yeah, you look right. at the championship season though, Charlie, and where we are in the league. We're currently 14th. We've got one game left to go, and we're on 56 points. So, who's going to win, me or Sam? Is that, that's the question. We've got Middlesbrough away. Could be so a uh, Sam's, Sam Sam's got 15th, I've gone 14th. Yeah, I think we could be lower. But I think Sam Yuko might have the best chance. But, hey, good result. And if we do beat Borough, um, we'll be on, I think you said 60 points. We'd be on 59. So, that's a pretty good effort, isn't it? It's not bad at all. I, I, I can't believe, I've, honestly, I haven't watched this back at all. I, I'm, I'm relatively happy with mine. Uh, Sam, 15th of that, that must be, that'll be a huge day in the WD18 calendar. Can Sam take one over Jacob, 15th versus 14th predictions? Yeah, listen, I never normally want Watford to lose, but if we drop points, against <laughs> 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 oh, I love you, Sam. I did say, and it has sort of panned out exactly like that in terms of we're not quite going to be near the playoffs, but we'll be just above the relegation zone. I think there's been times this season where we were never in serious danger of going down, but we were never in serious, like looking seriously at the playoffs. I don't think we're sort of flirting with both a couple of times. So been a very mid table season overall. 
Yeah, very mid take. Very 14th slash 15th. Um, definitely not 10th is probably the takeaway from this one. Let us know in the comment section, by the way, what, what you made of our predictions as well. Anything else, lads, that we've missed? Anything we want to wrap up on before we look ahead to the last game of the season against Middlesbrough in a, in a, in a dead rubber? Now, what I would say is, obviously, now we're sort of reflecting on the whole, uh, the season as a whole. I actually, I wouldn't call it a good season, but I also wouldn't call it a bad season. I've I've really, really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed seeing this Watford team develop. I think it's been a really, um, I think they're a team who are a lot more committed than what we've seen in previous years. I don't think they've thrown the towel in um, a couple of times, potentially, that Huddersfield game for, uh, was the only one I can really think of. But um, having such a young team, it's been nice to see so many players develop and, and grow as players. And hopefully... Uh, a couple of them stick around for next year. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be fascinating to see what happens with Tom Cleverley's Watford team in the 24-25 season. We will do our predictions for the 24-25 season as well. And then we could, as I said, we could look back on them and, and discuss them like we did today. I hope you did enjoy today's video and podcast. Make sure to leave a like on the way out if you did. Subscribe to WD18. Follow Sam, Charlie and myself on our social channels. The links are in the description below. Follow WD18 at WD18 fans. As always, let us know what you think in the comment section below. I know some of those predictions will, will split opinions and we will see you next time. Take care, guys, and see you at Middlesbrough. Up the audits.